Je suis sûr qu'il t'écoutera avec la Mais d'abord, pensez à l'artiste, à votre bon cœur. could save your life. It's our only line of communication. Good up there, Edwards. Yes. Starting to get the hang of it. What you do back home? Drove. A car. I was a chauffeur. All stop. This is far enough. Infantry will go on. We're well behind Jerry's lines now. No way of knowing what we're up against. That's a cheerful thought. Come on, lads. We've held together this long. Let's not fall apart now. Old Bess has got us this far. And she'll get us all the way if we do our bit.
CPUs exhibited similar gaming performance with i3-8100 slightly superior in few game titles. But one thing I like to point it out here, while gaming the Ryzen system was more responsive when switching between tasks and I am sure people love to have this advantage. Few game titles like Kingdom Come Deliverance and Project Cars 2 which are launched recently has started favoring more cores and I can see Ryzen enjoyed higher FPS in these games and 1600 will serve you the best in the long run when future games start using more cores. So choosing any of these processors will not disappoint you in terms of gaming. But once you start doing AV tasks, you will definitely begin to appreciate the Ryzen 1600. It is considerably faster than i3-8100 in such workloads. And this chip becomes a beast when you push the clock speeds towards 3.7 to 3.9 GHz and it trashes the i3 in such workloads and closes the gap in gaming performance too. And remember, the Ryzen 1600 needs a better aftermarket cooler to reach those higher clock speeds. And the stock cooler is only sufficient for handling up to 3.7 GHz. If you want to enjoy good productivity and gaming performance, the Ryzen 1600 will serve the best even at its stock frequencies. So my pick will be the Ryzen 1600.